escape the nine to five and create your path to freedom. Hi guys, welcome to this week's episode of the Unconventionalist interview. And today I'm really excited to interview Ella, who is on my left, right, I don't know where it is on the screen, <laughs> who is also a member of the Unconventionalist and also a new coaching client of mine that has had some great insights uh, to share with us today about her journey to create her side hustle while working a full-time job. If you're watching this and if you're brand new to the community, this is the free community for Screw the Cubicle and myself. Uh, and what we do is we bring people together uh, as a tribe of people seeking to do something different with their lives. Uh, and in order for you to also feel inspired about whether or not this is possible for you, uh, we want to connect you with real stories of real people and inspire you to go forth with your own escape plan. So I'm really stoked to have one real person called Ella <laughs> on the show uh, because you are, Ella, you're very fresh in your beginning journey, which I think is such a, a great thing to talk about because we can talk about how things are successful and amazing a year or two later, but it's really in this part of the journey that actually matters the most and we want to get a bit real about what to expect, right, in this sort of beginning part of starting uh, that escape plan and creating a, uh, creating a, a business on the side. So mm -hmm. I know you've, you know, what I, what I wanted to talk to you about most on the show is because you sort of shared with me uh, really great habits. Now they're not easy habits to incorporate. And that's what I want to sort of talk to you about is how do you continue that momentum of things like waking up early and, you know, the, the disciplines and the, um, the habits, right. That you're bringing into your new life in order to create this brand new business, uh, while you're still working a full-time job. So, well, first of all, tell us a little bit about what you do, where you're from, uh, and what do you, what was your personal motivation to create something different for yourself beyond the cubicle? Mm -hmm. um, so I work in digital marketing. Um, I'm actually from Africa. Oh, are you? <laughs> um, I grew up there. Yeah. <laughs> and I grew up there and left when I was 16. I spent six years in the UK and then I've been here, here in Australia for seven years. Um, so I have a degree in advertising, started off in sales and sort of then started working in digital marketing and just loved it. And, and mm. sort of, there was a lot of things that felt really easy about it and sort of worked around a lot of um, predominantly had a bit of a retail background, which has been really interesting and fast paced. But um, I think uh, in my sales time, I spent a lot of time training people and uh, sort of work, working one on one coaching with people, which I really enjoyed as well. Um, and didn't really get the opportunity to use that as much in my marketing space, even when I was sort of in management roles. But mm. um, I, I really enjoyed, I, really, I, I love my current job. Um, I work for a large health and fitness brand in Australia, and I really like my job. But um, I think I've always wanted to work for myself. I kind of have this obsession with um, this idea of this life that I want to live in. It's just a life on my terms when, you know, I can decide uh, what I want to spend my day doing. I love the outdoors and I hate being stuck in an office all day. It drives me crazy. Yeah. Uh, like I have to get out and do stuff and, you know, I have a standing desk. So I'm just like up and down all day, just like trying to move and, and, and do stuff. And I do, um, I do like the atmosphere of working with lots of people. Uh, and it's not that I want to be a loner and kind of get away from that. Mm. I really just want to, um, to, be, to be more in control. I'm, you just turned 29 and I'm thinking about having a family. And I really, uh, you know, the, the thought of navigating through maternity leave and asking for days off and picking kids up from daycare, like none of that appeals yeah. to me at all. Uh, and I figure that there's got to be a better way to do it. Um, mm. and yeah, I, I attended a Tony Robbins seminar in September, a uh, huge fan of his and yeah, that just kind of kicked me, kicked me up the ass and gave me the boot that I needed to go. Okay. Well, this is not, you know, cross some crazy dream mm. like this, living like this all over the world. And my partner and I have always wanted to live by the beach and wake up and just, you know, go outside, do what we want to do for the day, do some work from our laptops. It's not that we want to sit on the beach, you know, in a hammock mm. all day, but just about having access to that lifestyle that we want so much. So we've decided to make that happen for us. So, um, yeah, that's, that's, I guess a bit about, um, why, why we're doing this and, uh, we, we've got a deadline as well, which is really You're getting married. Really, yeah. yeah. We're getting married <laughs> and going to potentially move. Yeah. To the other side of the world. So there, there's lots, I guess, resting on this. So, which is good because it's given put the pressure on me to actually commit to making the changes and decisions. And it, mm. you know, you mentioned there about getting up early. I get up at, um, I get up at 440 every day now, which is, wow. I've, you know, five years ago, my partner Jerry's like, you know, can you imagine yourself this five years ago? And I'm like, no, like I was not a morning, morning person. <laughs> well, let's, actually, let's actually talk about that because I think, you know, one of the big questions I get from people is like, how do you find the time? You know, they're always like, yeah. I work this full-time job. I come home and exhaust, I'm exhausted. There's no way I'm feeling yeah like inspirational, you know, to be working yeah. on a second project and be learning. Cause I think 
especially in the beginning of starting a business, we really don't know anything <laughs> sometimes. And we have to be a student again, and we need to block up a bit of time for learning and then a little bit of for implementation. Now, what has sort of worked for you? So you said you're not a morning person. I wasn't either. Um, and how, how do you get yourself? Because I think the last time we talked about this, which may be a lot, a lot longer now uh, for you, but you were saying it was like a full 30 day sprint of like, 4.30 in the morning, you know, getting up at that time, uh, which is difficult yeah. for people that don't uh, do that and have, have a morning yeah. routine like that. So how did you manage to discipline yourself and make sure that you do that uh, to pursue your side hustle? Well, it's, it's been eight weeks now. So I totted it up before Watch I got on the phone because I was like really wanted to know, like I had a bit of a lapse. I went to a weekend festival on Stradbroke <laughs> Island last weekend and it kind of threw things off a bit. Fair enough. I kind of got back it. Um, but I think they're, they're really, and I've learned this from everybody that I've learned from it. It's just the why, like mm. the, the reason to do it is so, so strong for me that I, it literally pulls me out of bed. Like I don't, I don't wake up in the morning and sort of look at my alarm and I'm like, Oh, I'm like, yep. Awesome. We're up. Okay, cool. The, the clock started. You know, <laughs> like, yeah. I do have such a limited amount of time in the day. And I know now that if like, I can either choose to waste it or I can use it. And once it's gone, it's gone. And that's really like, I was talking to yet just yesterday we had our coaching session about like, mm. how am I going to fill this stuff in? And it's like, well, I need to fit it all in, but I need to make some time for myself as well. So mm. that morning, that I have is like a bit of a sanctuary. Um, you know, I get up, I come downstairs and I'm down on my yoga mat at, you know, 445. I read a page of the daily stoic every day just to ground me mm. and remind me that, you know, I'm not in control of everything. And there's the world is much bigger than just me. And then I go for a walk for half an hour and listen to something, a podcast or an audio book that inspires me to just set me up right for the day. I have a 20 minute Tony Robbins priming routine that I do. And mm. then I have my partner and work for an hour and like that if I do that every morning it, it mm. really sets me up right for the day like it sounds like a massive thing and it is it is a big morning but um you know I get to work and I've been up for four hours <laughs> like people are like you know trying to just drag themselves in and I've, I've right. accomplished the day already so it doesn't really matter what happens for the rest of the day for me like it's I've been set up in a good way and that's not to say that if I don't if something gets in the way of that routine, like maybe my friends ask me to join them at a gym class or I have an event like yesterday that I kind mm. of have to move things around a bit. I don't get disheartened by that. I just, that's the commitment that I've made to myself. And I used to beat myself up a lot about being like not being very disciplined and sticking to things that I said. Mm. So for me to actually see myself achieve that has been, yeah, really motivational. Cause I'm like, yeah, well that was just the story that you told yourself now. Look, <laughs> look at level of commitment that you actually have so yeah and I mean I love the fact that you started with not going straight to the laptop right like you have this sort of um yeah. mental ease into going into a bit of a work mode because I think I used to do that as well it's like straight wake up get my coffee run on the laptop and it's yeah. that feels a bit like oh do I really want to wake up for that but when you sort of yeah. buffer it a little bit with oh I get to sit on this amazing little uh mat here and actually just do a bit mm -hmm. of stretches listen to them tracks that you yeah. want to listen to and starting yeah. that day that way feels a little bit less um, uh, absolutely right right away I've, I've um, gotten a bit bad recently I've noticed you know I start walking down the stairs because I'm like a little, sometimes I'm a little bit like a sleepy when I wake up and I just have mm. the routine I put the gear on so I've started noticing I'll like start checking my emails because now that I've got stuff happening I'm like waiting for the you know response from the pitch to come in I've got like exciting stuff happening so I'm really having to to be way more disciplined and you know I, I hear I hear successful people say it, you know all the time they're like they talk about time management and I thought I thought I had issues with time management and like I'm just getting started and I'm like oh shit now I have time issues I'm like wait until you're like really busy wait until you're actually <laughs> successful like I'm like looking for VAs and things to help, mm. you know, just really like maximize my time. I'm like going to have to Tim Ferriss the shit out of it. I think. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um, I love that you're already thinking about that. You know, how can I uh, get help, right? And support. Cause I think a, a lot of us have that misconception that we have to be this successful yeah. business first before we start to go, could I outsource something to an assistant or a VA yeah. uh, that can take up a lot of time, but really is in my zone of genius or maybe even yeah. where I should be spending my time. Yeah. Uh, well, let's talk I think my plan is that. really good at, um, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, yeah, no I think worries. my plan is really good at grounding me as well because I have to show up for him it's not like I can get absorbed in this world and even though every waking minute we spend together is about talking about the things that we want to achieve but you know I I don't want to burn out really quickly you know this is this is not something mm. I'm trying this is something I'm going to make happen so it's really important that I do have those things in place because it's going to get crazy right like it's mm. it's it's a big massive adventure so I think to have those things to ground me and, to, and even just having him sort of 
going, you know, like you're a bit tired today, maybe have a lion, <laughs> you know? yeah. like those things, it's a good mirror to kind of help me go. Yeah. Well, like I can just slow down, like nothing's going to disappear. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I love that you enrolled your, well, your fiance now into the goals, yeah. because I think that he can help support you and pull you out from the chaos at times when you do need to actually schedule in a self care you know, day, yeah. uh, because we do yeah. tend to sometimes overwork ourselves and overwhelm ourselves because we're trying to sort of quote unquote hustle constantly. Um, mm -hmm. Now, you, now, Ella, you've, you've sort of got a lot of, goal, you know, when you came uh, to coach with me in the beginning of time, which has been about a month ago, uh, there were a few goals that you had in mind, right? The first one is like, I want to raise some money to actually pay for this coaching program. Mm -hmm. And then the second thing was like, I want to be, be able to um, actually find clients. And that was something you, I remember when we first had this conversation, you're like, I don't even think anyone would hire me. Like, do people even need me. There's all these other agencies out there and blah, blah, blah. So how has that changed for you? What, if you, what, have, what has changed for you in that regard of those big key questions you had? And, how, and what's it like for you now? Like, have you validated anything for yourself? Was something a little bit less scary than before? And sort of how did you manage to complete those first two goals for yourself in, in the last sort of 30 days to 60 days? Yeah. So, um, I've definitely been validated so much more than I could have imagined. Like I, um, I've, I set myself a goal of making a thousand dollars from my freelance business by December. And I did that, you know, two weeks ago. So right. that, that was pretty awesome. But I made yeah. So obviously like, uh, um, the coaching was a, an investment that I wanted to make in myself, but um, you know, that came out of my wedding fund. So I was like, I'm going to make a commitment to put it back. So I had this stupid thing in my head. Again, it came back to the discipline thing. I was like, you're not allowed to say yes to this coaching until you can make, you know, some dollars. I don't care whether it's five or 200 from some freelancer work. Just prove to yourself that you're prepared to do what it's going to take to make this work. Mm. And that was a huge that really set me up. I've never done anything like that before. Uh, um, and I really wanted this coaching. I really wanted to work with you. So I went on Upwork. I set up a profile, you know, like that freelancing website. I set up a profile within 20 minutes. I, you know, I love writing CVs and cover letters. Like my favorite thing to do is get a job. So I like yeah. went online and I was like, I'm going to find someone. And somebody paid me $120 to set their Facebook page up. Wow. And within 20 minutes, I had my first Thing. So I hopped on the email to you and I was like, sign me up, Lydia, I'm good to go. <laughs> yeah, you did. Um, but I think that really set me up in the right way. I was kind of like, well, okay, I, I had a small win. It's doable. This Upwork place has changed a lot since I looked at it five years ago. There might be something in this, a way for me to get access to, to new clients. Um, and then I just reached out to my network and I kind of was like, hey, this is what I'm thinking. You know, the fact that I've committed to a business coach meant a lot to my network. They were like, okay, well, she's really serious about this. And they've, they've been asking me to work with them sort of on and off you know, over the, over the years, but I've kind of been like, oh, sure, like maybe we can collab, but I haven't really, you know, kind, kind of committed to that as a, as a business decision. So mm. I just reached out to my network and said, you know, a few people, it's like anything you're working on at the moment, like this is what I'm trying to do. And there was kind of radio silence for maybe like three days. And I was like, oh shit, <laughs> like, I'm just going to have to freelance at Upwork for, you know, $10 an hour for the rest of my life. Um, and then they were like buses. They just came all at once. And um, you know, just opportunities that I think I was, I tried to be strategic about and, and just really careful that I, I was very nurturing to the people I was speaking to and just really mm. over delivered, um, to make sure that, you know, they were delighted with the experience. I, th I think they were, um, and some of them are longer projects that are so, sort of still happening. And then some weird shit started happening. Like I got messages, you know, I'm working through some of the, the, the stuff I'm working through with you about who, mm. the people that I want to work with, you know, my ideal market. And then they start messaging me on, on Upwork, like these, these, these random, like perfect avatars, like right. get in touch with me. And I'm like, what is happening here? Like, just someone, is someone playing a game with me? Like, that's what it mm. felt like. Um, and, you know, I, I got messages off LinkedIn asking if I want to freelance. That's never happened before. Like, mm. I've not even put on LinkedIn that I'm freelancing. Like, you know, that, that whole law of attraction thing, like the things mm. you're looking for, you'll find. Um, you know, and I'd like to think I did that myself, but I don't think I did. I think it was just sort of what was happening. So, well, so also just, I think I, because you're focused on it, your attention was sort of like, you could catch those opportunities a lot more yeah. clearly because if you're not looking for opportunities, you don't really see them, do you? You know, so yeah. it's interesting yeah, about like, what's happening because that's also sort of what I've been talking about with a lot of people in, in the community is that there's a lot of potential opportunity all around you. You know, your friends, your old bosses, your yeah. uh, friends okay. that have already been getting free advice from you, you know, very likely they know other people or they themselves might actually be willing to invest in a bit of time with you you know so why not look into the low-hanging fruit stuff and I, lo I love that you mentioned like your own network because that is usually the first 
place to go to. We disregard the current network actually, but these are filled with people that trust us already. You know, we've, yeah. we've, been, we've already proven our credibility to them and very much, you know, what you're doing now isn't exactly completely different uh, from what you were doing in the agencies, except now you're, your own, you're your own boss, right? But yeah. there wasn't actually a huge difference around that, was it? No, not at all. And it's, um, I, yeah, I knew how to do it. I have freelanced in the past, you know, as well. Like it's not like this is the first side hustle, mm. um, but there's something that's happening. It's just happening really organically. It, it feels easy, even though at times it is really overwhelming. And I just spoke to you yesterday about the fact that there's no white space in my calendar anymore. And it, it will get to the point at some stage where I look at that block in the middle where I actually have my day job and I'm like, I need that time. So mm. like that, that's really good. Cause that's the goal. It's like, get to a point where you feel comfortable to go, okay, now I need that slot, that nine to five slot. So that's, you know, that's the quit the job, mm. moment, right? That's where you go. Okay. I'm, I'm sort of ready to do that. I think it's going to be a really um, up and down journey. I think there's going to be lots of moments to check in, which is why I've um, decided to work with somebody to help me do that. Because I think I think that the checking in part is, um, or the fact that things aren't going to be smooth sailing is an expectation. Mm. I opened a retail and open and closed a retail business this year, and it was, you know, it was just a massive journey. So I can imagine this is going to be exactly the same. But uh, the the definitely the the small amount of success I've experienced in such a short period of time that momentum, I think that's, if I was to give advice to anybody, that's it. As soon as you start to feel a bit of momentum, pick it up and run with it because you have to generate it. So if you lose it, you have to generate it again. That takes time and energy. And, you know, we've only got certain amounts of that at a time. So I think I'm running with this at the moment. It seems to be working really well. Um, Mm. we'll We'll see how it goes. Excellent. Well, so far, I think what you shared with us was really valuable for actually first time people that sort of go, where do I start? Right. And I think we overcomplicate things. I mean, I remember you going, do I have to have my website up? I mean, you've done all this without a website, right? Without any social presence whatsoever. It was just like good old fashioned holistic hard work. (laughs) I know it doesn't sound like a hack in any way, but that is what it is. It's like the more focus you got to get your hands dirty. Totally. You got to roll up your sleeves and and do it actually really manually in the beginning versus trying to automate something, which is not going to happen in this beginning part of your journey. Uh, So you talked about, you know, uh, one of the things that changed how you have time for your side hustle is having a a disciplined morning routine, which is Mm -hmm. before work, which I think is an excellent idea. None of the world's like agenda is on you yet. You know, no one's giving you emails and like taking up your time and getting you pissed off in traffic just yet. So you're in the most precious um, peace of mind, you know, in the beginning of the day to start working on your thing, right? The thing Mm -hmm. that you care about the most. Uh, And then the second thing is, uh, as you said, putting yourself out there, right? Going on upwork.com, putting your first profile up and going, this is, I think the kind of work I want to do is sort of represents Mm -hmm. my resume. I'll start with that. And then you started getting people, right? Like coming Mm -hmm. to you with emails. And you also reached out to your inner network, which I think is brilliant because it's a simple thing to do. And again, people trust you there. Uh, And then what do you think uh, as a last sort of advice, because a lot of it, as you and I have talked about in in many coaching sessions, is never about always the strategy or the plan. Most of us do know what we have to do to sort of get Mm -hmm. to the next step but we just don't do it. And that's sort of a, a mindset issue, you know, around what we believe is, is, is yeah. possible for us. We have a lot of self doubt, you know, that, that is mm-hmm. around our uh, gifts and expertise. Uh, what do you think, you know, for someone that's beginning in this journey, what are some of those mindset shifts uh, or new truth bombs, you know, that needs to be planted into their heads that you have sort of discovered, like, you know, from the beginning of your journey, you're like, you thought this and now you no longer do. And this is why, like, what would those shifts yeah. be like? Um, I think the, 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 the first thing was probably to go, you don't, you don't know what you're doing and that's okay. Yeah. You, you don't have, you know, I don't have the, the, the written plan in front of me, step one, step two, step three, step four, which is why I wanted to work with you because mm. you do, you know, right. you've helped people do this before and you, you have the formula to make it work. So I, I acknowledge what I didn't know. I went, I don't know how to do this. So I need to find somebody who does know. And I knew that that was going to cost money. And I was like, I'm prepared to invest in that. Like people spend money on cars. Why wouldn't I spend money trying to achieve my lifetime goal? Like that mm. seems, it seems ludicrous when you put it like that. But I was like, yes, yeah, so I don't know. I need to acknowledge what I don't know. And I need to decide to invest in myself. Um, and I think by acknowledging what I didn't know, it also forced me to reach out. So mm. something that I am like, just crazy preaching about at the moment is just connecting with people and it sounds so crass and like oh you must reach out and connect with people like it's so fucking true like you do need to do that I think I got such inspiration and um, you know post Tony Robbins there was a Facebook group with 2,000 people in it 
and it was uh, a place that I just didn't know why I wouldn't have typically engaged in that space. But I just posted and I was like, Hey guys, this is my dream. This is the life that I want, you know, and sort of detailed it out. And I went, is anybody doing that? Like, <laughs> Am I crazy or does that really exist? And I was inundated with messages. Some people trying to sell me shit, you know, mm -hmm. coaching course. Um, you know, affiliate marketing programs and the mm. like. Um, but uh, a few people just with stories that knocked me on, you know, off my feet kind of going, wow, that's a reality. You've made that happen. And they didn't want anything, just wanted to share their story with me. So mm. I kind of, when things become less of a dream and more of a tangible reality, they seem closer to kind of grab. And I think I where I know when I need to be inspired, I'm like, you know, I've got this idea and I'm like, I just want to be inspired about it to help me see it. So it's so real that, you know, I, I, I see it in my head before I wake up at 4.45. And I mm. think those things, just things to pull you in the right direction. Um, and the, so those two things were, were really important. And I think that the third one was just about um, doubt and fear. And I know that women experience this like probably mm. tenfold well like we ha I, I have a big problem with the imposter syndrome which I know like everybody does mm -hmm. and you still do yeah day. always still yeah do. like and it's never gonna go away but yeah. I think I acknowledge the fact that if I give into that that's gonna hold me back and like I don't want to be held back so my option is to not give into it so mm. it's gonna happen I need to acknowledge that it's gonna be there um, and so, you know, sometimes there's going to be a legitimate, I don't know everything about this situation. I should ask for help. And mm. that's really important, but also just to kind of go, shh, shh, shh. <laughs> I'm busy trying to do this thing I'm trying to do right now. Can you come back later and we'll, yeah. we'll talk? I think mm. because I've kept myself so busy and driven through the momentum, I don't have time for that voice at the moment. Mm. I'm like, you might be right. I might be shit and I might fail, but can we talk when that happens? Because yes, it's not happening. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm, totally. trying, I'm trying to get there at the moment. As, so, I love that you I, trumped fear by just going, I'm actioning right now on things, okay? Yeah. I'm too busy, busy for you right now. I'm busy creating yeah. my life. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, like it creeps in, you know, like I, I put in a proposal the other day and I was like, I'm, I was freaking out about it. Um, but I was also like, you know, kind of literally sat there like this and I was like, oh, just push the yeah. button. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> make myself do it and push the button. And look, I'm not saying it's not, I'm not going to be, you know, terrified moving forward, but I think just, just going, yeah, I, can't, I acknowledge that, but I'll deal with it later, you mm. know? And then when later doesn't come, right? Like you, you prove mm. yourself prove to yourself that you can do it and you kind of move forward so so yeah I'd say that like surround yourself with amazing people as much as possible whether it's you know physically like I went to a lean-in group today and met some amazing women like physically online just like consistently be inspired by the people that you that you admire and, and, and you want to be like um push push through the the fear because it's it's just a thing that, 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 that that's passing and I can't really remember what I said in the middle <laughs> something around that, that whole realm. Yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. Well, yeah. I, I love that it's all incremental. There's simple steps. They're not complicated, right? They're simple steps. And I think um, the, th those are actually very, very crucial steps for most of us to get that journey started. But they're incremental, yeah. aren't they? They're not big, big, big steps yeah. the entire time all the time. No. They get bigger yeah. in time as you get braver, which you can only yeah. uh, get to. I mean, bravery and courage is only going to grow when we actually do something different. We can't sort of wish for it or like chant a mantra and then courage will appear like courage happens yeah. when you do something sort of slightly a little bit above like a little bit outside your edge and you're like oh wow i didn't i didn't die or i didn't that wasn't yeah. bad and then you sort of <laughs> a little bit more a little bit more you know incremental steps is where the results are really but the consistency which is what i'm so um you know, I, I love that you do that consistency thing and you put yourself mm -hmm. through that challenge for initially 30 days, right? That just that waking up a little bit early, that I think changed the habits and discipline of how you also approach other things. It's like, I'm going to pitch mm -hmm. these proposals and all of them might fail, but at least I'm doing the sprint of proposals that allows yeah. me to see what happens. And, you know, and, and it did fail. I think it's important yeah. for me to mention just that, like totally. I wrote, um, so I won my first, I pitched three and won one for the Upwork job. And then I pitched 12 and, and haven't won any of them. So right. like, I think it's equally important that like, I haven't totally. had setbacks in the last 30 days. I've, I've probably had a shit ton of setbacks, but I've literally mm -hmm. just chosen to ignore them because they mm -hmm. are not appealing to me right now. Um, yeah. and, and it's worked. So like, that's a huge advice. Like, yep. Okay. Bump. Whoops. That was a bump in the road. Keep going. Just keep mm -hmm. going. Keep, keep yeah, I think now I need to maybe just slow down a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Now it's like taking a bit of a pause because you did such a, a sprint yeah. with it. Well, so yeah. lastly, let's let's talk about what's um, 
uh, just to finish off this interview, what's, what's next for you? So what's the next step now that you've got a few clients under your belt, you've validated your skill sets, you know, there's the demand for your talents outside of, you know, an agency sort of model. Um, what's next for you? What are you going to work on maybe for the next uh, 90 days, perhaps? Uh, and how if people are interested in what you have to do. So uh, explain again, of what, what's the things that you can help with and where they can find you. And we'll make sure to put that link on the screen as well. For yeah, you. cool. Um, so I've spent the last sort of month with you working out what, what my offering is going to be, where I'm going to position myself. And um, I believe that that will be helping um, other specifically women in um, the digital marketing space, but it's from a really strategic level. So mm. women who have got, um, and it does apply to everybody, but um, I just I love working with women yeah. um, and helping them succeed. And um, women who have got their own businesses, um, who offer themselves as services, so coaches, authors, trainers, people that, you know, have their own personal brand and that, that's what they sell because um, that's, uh, that I, it has a heart to it and that's that's what I love. I love people. I love connecting mm. with people and I think I'm, I'm good at being able to help other people get their own message across in, in a legitimate way. Um, yeah. uh, so it, it's about helping people with their strategies. It'll typically be to, to bring more customers to their business or to connect with more people, build better relationships with those people out there. So that's um, refining that, that offering and making sure that I'm designing an experience that will, you know, blow everybody away and exceed expectations is going to be the, the primary thing for me and really focusing on the people that I have access to right now, doing an outstanding job for them. Um, so that they can become supporters for me in, in, in the next journey. I believe that part of my program will be to sort of um, create uh, a, a bit of a testing environment for me to, um, you know, get, get real-time feedback from these people, which is just such an awesome opportunity. Like, when does that happen? Like, when do you get to ask yeah. your clients? for genuine feedback about yeah, the process totally. without sort of feeling really vulnerable. Yeah. Like I'm supposed to do everything. And so also that, getting those be... testimonials under your belt too, before yeah. you actually go for an official launch, which I think is definitely the smart way to go. And, and that helps with that imposter syndrome, you know, like if I can do a good job for people in a space that I know is safe, um, I don't feel like, you know, I'm under a ridiculous amount of pressure because everything's on the table and it's honest That's about right. what I'm doing. Um, you know, that will really help to validate me and then I can go after some big fish when I'm done. And I really mm. want to, right? Like, mm. I, I, I do have a really strong vision. I had a call with somebody the other day um, to help them with their coaching business. And it was, it felt so right. I said this to you last night, like the yeah. first time in my life, I was like, oh my God, this could be my work. Like this really could be, you know, there's people that say, you know, I wake up and I, I just, I don't even, doesn't even feel like work. And I'm like, yeah. what the fuck ever? Like, <laughs> stop, <laughs> yeah. stop with the but, bullshit. Um, yeah, stop with the bullshit. I'm not buying it. Yeah. Um, I had one of those moments the other day, Ooh. which is like super cheesy, right? But it, it's real. Yeah. So um, I think I need to just, just build on that, grow, grow it. Yeah. And um, so, so for me, it's, yeah, it's going to be about finding some, uh, working with the people I've got at the moment to, to make sure I'm the best at what I can possibly do, mm -hmm. um, find my place in, in the market, you know, learn from other people that are doing what, what I'm doing. And I'm going to start, try and stay super humble along the way. Like I don't consider that I've reached a level of success and I don't ever feel like I will. I just want to keep growing and learning along the way. This is real now and it makes it, it makes it special and I want to protect it. Like it's not something that I want to have an ego about or, you know, I am my own business. Like this is my way of life that I'm trying to build for me and, you know, my future family. So it's really important that mm. I take the time and, and give it the attention it deserves, which is why I'm so happy with everything I've been doing with you. Yeah. Like I've just seen such amazing results out here, like in such, I'm a, like such a proud little mama bear. I'm like, oh, I'm just doing it. It's like a little it side so <laughs> like, I, could have, I could never have imagined this. Hey, like I yeah. just knew it was the right thing to do. It felt right. But for anybody who's on the genuinely, and this isn't just the pitch, like anyone who's on the fence about like, I just don't know where to start, like ask for help. It's not, mm. it doesn't make you less of an individual. It doesn't mean that you don't, you know, you're not smart. You're just, in fact, it makes you smarter because mm. you are doing the things that other people, you know, don't, don't do that. People don't ask for help. And then mm. if anything, it will give you a sounding board for your own intellect that you can, you know, bounce ideas, things you already know mm. off of somebody else. So um, yeah, that, that's what's next for me. And hopefully in 12 months, um, the, the background behind me will be a beautiful tropical beach. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or we'll be doing it as a, as a live stream in Bali. Yeah. In Bali. Exactly. <laughs> a little celebration oh, coconuts we can have together. So, yeah, totally. I'm down. <laughs> and where can people find you? So we'll put the link up, but just let, let them know sort of whereabouts they can find you and what sort of services yeah. you provide for them. 
Yeah, cool. So um, I, the link that Lydia will put up is for LinkedIn and that's probably the best space for me at the moment. I've been so busy servicing clients that I haven't got my website up yet, um, but that is a, a work in progress and it's going to be beautiful and, yeah. and, and awesome for everybody. Um, so, so that'll be on there. Um, so yeah, definitely hit me up on LinkedIn if you um, want to talk through some strategy or, you know, you just, anything's resonated with what you've heard today and you just want to connect with me. I'd love to hear from you. Um, so I can help from sort of general strategy level, looking at your brand, um, what's your position in the market at the moment um, and sort of where you want to get to I think we'll learn through you know those calls like what what it is you're trying to achieve and, and we can focus on building something from that so I can help with um, all, all of the, the sort of the, the typical digital marketing stuff but I don't want to get sort of caught up in the channels yeah. like yeah I can do Facebook ads yeah I can yeah. do AdWords sure, I can do all those things yeah. but we need to work out what's right for, for your business first so I yes. think that'll be There's a very bespoke um, bespoke custom uh, digital yes, strategy bespoke. for you yeah perfect thank you so very much that was amazing insight i love talking to you i could go for another hour if i could uh but thanks for joining me and as i said Elle and i will check back into the video in the group and see if you guys have any questions about uh anything to do with sort of getting more time for your side hustle any mindset habits anything that ella talked about today that you want a bit more information on she's super generous and i'm sure she'll be able to share anything too. Uh, thanks for joining us today. And anytime that you guys have a topic, something you want to ask for anyone else that might want to interview, or uh, you have a topic of choice that you think, you know what, I wish Lydia would talk about this a little bit more. Just let us know as well under the, under the comments uh, for the videos, and we'll be sure to shoot a video just for you. Okay. Thanks very much. Thanks, Ella. Thanks, See Lydia. Bye-bye. Have you been desiring to create a life and career that gives you the freedom that you deserve, but you're not quite sure where to start? Well, let me be the guide to help you quit that job that's crushing your soul, discover your strengths, and make money doing something that you love and will care about. Head over to screwthecubicle.com to find tools and resources I've created just for you to help you jumpstart your escape plan from your 9 to 5 and launch a business you can run from anywhere.